transition is with us and it's here to stay. Global economics, technological changes at the speed of light, and social values that are changing faster than any time in the past to help guide you along your journey in this fast changing life. The show with a purpose to empower, to enlighten, to educate, and to entertain. The show that offers you a friend, a guide in the most transitional time in the history of the human race. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's your host, Steve Beeman. Hello, my friends, and welcome to this, the Steve Beeman Show. I am Steve Beeman, your host, here with my lovely and talented Carol Parisi as a co-host. And we're here, as always, to empower you with the knowledge and tools you need to build a better life for you and your family. Uh, This is going to be a really intense show, my friends. We're going to be talking in this first segment about an article I wrote called, Is China Preparing for War Against the United States? Uh, Light topic for the day, right, Carol? Uh, Steve, that sounds a little, like, crazy. Woohoo crazy. It's well, actually very scary on our S word today. I, I would like to think that it is a little scary and crazy and a little off the wall, but it's not. It came right out of the China military journals. But with that said, it is our S word week, so we've got a wonderful spiritual path for you coming around in the Master Your Mind segment. And at the bottom of the hour, we always have our wonderful word of the week. And in the uh, Master Your Money time, we're going to come in, and we've got, uh, give me half a second here, because there's too many things that I'm talking about. But we're going to talk about black swan events. Okay, I I, I don't get that, but I'm sure we're going to. (laughs) I promise you, you will. But we're going to start off right away with this um, article that I wrote, which I do every week, published through stevebeeman.com. And this was called, Is China Preparing for War Against the United States? It's a very sobering thought, isn't it? Well, Steve, you started the article out by saying the problem is not whether the war will break out, but when, said China. Sounds like saber rattling to me. (laughs) There it is. It came right out of China's military publications, part of the state news agencies. And what they're talking about is that they're building advanced weapons systems, specifically missile technology, that can fight against the U.S. anti-missile defense systems. This is, we talked in pre-show about whether it's saber rattling or not. And I don't think it is because they're not threatening. They're actually doing this. And this is part of a concerted effort on the part of Red China to take over the trade routes in the eastern uh, uh, Eastern Pacific Ocean, where they're now threatening Japan's islands. They're threatening um, international islands. They're building aircraft carrier landing strips or aircraft landing strips on these islands. China is expanding their center of influence in a great way. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you're saying they're building landing strips on islands that are outside of their own country? Oh, yeah. They, how how are they doing while. that? How are they doing that? What's allowing them to do that? No one's going to come into this country and start building... Well, there are, with all of the nations, there are the territorial waters claimed by that nation. Now, they're not always recognized as national sovereign space. Sometimes they're considered by the nations to be international water, even though that nation might claim them. Okay. So what China's done is where they have what they claim are national waters, but the world doesn't recognize. International waters. They, they're considered international. They've gone in and built these up to be strategic aircraft uh, places. Where they have the control over. They, and they have the control. Now, we've sent our warships in to say, hey, this isn't your land. This is international waters. They've come out and said, well, this is our land. We're going to go to war over it. But the fight here isn't against the U.S., I don't think. And this is a speculation on my well, part. Well, we owe them a ton of money. Wait, they don't want to well, fight us. <laughs> it's, not, we, it's not even that. We don't owe them as much as everybody uh, thinks. But they're, more, they're trying to extend their influence throughout the Far East. They're trying to get control of the trade routes. They're trying to become the dominant economic force in the Far East. So they're trying to supersede Japan. They're trying to supersede South Korea, and that's what they're trying so to do. So the red communists are trying to become capitalists? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, they, they're very smart. Smart in their, I won't call it capitalism, in the, but in the way they use the markets around the world to support Chinese economies. China is more China-centric than people think. They're not against other people in the world. They don't think about the others. They just do what They're they have to do. They're just purely pro-China, and they have a very, very long-range view of it. Think about China as a thousand-year empire. I mean, they've been around for a while. Well, now, you have some stunning numbers here. You you said uh, for the past eight years, China has been increasing its military to compete with the U.S. as a superpower. Indeed. And you, you said there's—and and also— 
um, increase the scope of their economy. And the numbers here that you have, do you want to start rattling off some of these numbers? Because they are stunning and they are scary. And these are from our own CIA. So these are pretty credible numbers. This now, is from the Central Intelligence Agency? It's from, it's from ours. That's right. So really? these are pretty credible. But let's look first at what's called purchasing parity. And this is the amount of gross domestic product that's available for purchase and supported by its citizens. The U.S. has always been the biggest economy in the world. But now, according to the Central Intelligence Agency, China has surpassed us. They're at about eighteen trillion. We're at seventeen okay, and but, a half. But, but population-wise, doesn't China have a heck of a lot more people than we they do? They do. So if you look per capita, we're still a lot better off. Okay. So but, I mean, the number here is seventeen trillion. There's a lot of three hundred and fifty million or billion. Three, it's seventeen trillion three hundred and fifty billion is the size of the U.S. economy. Okay, and China's is eight. Eighteen trillion ninety billion. Right, so they're slightly bigger, but and again, they have a lot more population. So per capita, per person, we're better off. Okay. But in aggregate, they're actually bigger than us now. But let's go to the next ones because this is where you get real serious. Yeah, this is very serious. External debt of the government. We have seventeen trillion. They have nine hundred and forty-nine billion. That's huge. Uh, it's that's sig- crazy. It's, that's crazy huge. Because- compare those numbers. I mean, we have one times our GDP in debt. They have one tenth of theirs. That's that's and that that's power. Not being in debt is a very powerful thing. Well, let thing me go for down to the next one because again, according to our central <laughs> Intel- intelligence agency, gold and foreign com- currency reserves. The U.S. has 130 billion. China has 3.2 billion in reserves. Tr- trillion? No, trillion. 3.2 trillion. Excuse 3. me. 3.2 yes. trillion to our 1.3 billion. 130 billion. 130 billion. So they have what is that? 20 times what we have. In gold. And foreign currency reserves. So what does that that's mean? That's like a savings account. Uh, that's, I get it. I get it. But how, what does that mean for us? And what does that mean geopolitically? Is it true that China is buying up all the gold and all the currencies? Well, what it means is they've got a lot more open capital to do things than we have. <laughs> if they want to buy companies, if they want to buy land, if they want to buy different things, they've got the money to do it. And if they want to increase their military expenditure, well, which is the, the next, next thing. Uh-huh. They're spending $155 billion a year on their military. Mm-hmm. We're spending, even after we've gone through the um, sequestration we've had, we're spending $580 billion a year on ours. So that's good. So that we're going to have more, or we waste a lot of ours. <laughs> well, it's not that. If you look at the next one, active duty military, they have 2.3 million members. We have 1.4. So they have double the size of the military force. But the key is in U.S. military expenditures, much of ours is on advanced technologies okay and we also have a lot more aircraft carriers i think they have one aircraft carrier we have 19 something like that so our naval systems are much much more powerful than the chinese as are our missiles and that's why this article was written because it's getting to the point that china is trying to catch up on the missile technology but don't, aren't they pretty technology savvy where they could go ahead and any of this technology we do with a press of a button of an EMT, they can crash all of our technology? It's not nearly that easy. First of all, we are still the innovators in the world. Most advanced technologies developed here in the United States. In fact, the vast, vast majority of it. They're a copycat country. They try to take what others develop and copycat it. Well, it never works out quite as good. Our fourth generation fighters are much more capable than their fourth generation fighters. The EMT thing you're bringing up, the electromagnetic pulse, and not T, but P, P. that's not going to be something China does. If anything, it would be a rogue nation like North Korea that tries to launch a one-time terror weapon because you get one shot with that. And and it's effective if you can make it happen. But the whole thing about this, I think people need to realize in the, you know, where the rubber meets the road in our lives, which is what this show, the Steve Beeman show is all about. What this says is you're seeing a dynamic shift in the globe. When we've all grown up, the United States has been the central power economically. But we're now beginning to share that with China. And as such, our companies need to learn to compete globally, which they're doing. But we as individuals need to learn to invest globally. We need to look at our 401ks and how they're invested. We need to recognize the power of the Chinese economy as a driving force in global economics. So it begs to question Knowing this is an empowering thing. Knowing this is an empowering thing if you take this information and know what to do with it and you're investing in everything else. And let's call it information saying, you know, purchasing parity is just a piece of information. 
Okay. Knowledge is saying, okay, I know where it stands in the scope of things. I get how it fits. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is knowing where to make money on it. I would tell you that goes into how you invest your money and how you look at your job security, how you look at products you may sell. We have to recognize we are one globe, and the globe is shifting its power structures every day. And, you know, in our country, we better make the right policy choices to keep the United States on top. Well, that certainly is transitional, isn't it, babe? It is. Is, I mean, is this like a global economy? Are we becoming these globalists, which everybody is afraid we of? We already are. People uh. just don't want to admit it. So anyway, that's a real deep one. But if you have questions, write me at steve at stevebeeman.com about it. We'll put this up, as we always do, in the blog on our site. Um, so we welcome you to look at it and ask us questions. You can reach Carol at um, stevebeeman.com, too. So when we come back, we're going to have our S um, or our Master Your Mind segment. We're talking down the spiritual path because as we travel through five paths to a transformed life, there is a lot to know on all of this. So Carol and I both... Welcome you to stay with us. We're going to have a great segment coming up, Carol. Don't you think so? I'm excited about Master Your Mind. It's going to go deep, folks. Stick <laughs> as, around. We're going to go I. deep here. So let's go master our minds. Hi, friends. Carol Parisi here. If you're like me, you're always on the quest for improved sleep and more energy. I discovered the secret to getting this. It's tart cherries and the restorative powers. It's been found that tart cherry juice, like the Cherry Bundy brand, could help to relieve aches and pains, provide faster muscle recovery, and help you get a good night's sleep. The science shows that tart cherries and Cherry Bundy are rich in antioxidants that help reduce inflammation in the body. These antioxidants also work to reduce exercise-induced oxidative stress to help your body recover faster. Tart cherries also contain naturally occurring melatonin, known as a key ingredient to a good night's rest. To learn more about the science behind tart cherry juice, check out ChooseCherries.com. It's full of data from independent research studies. My favorite tart cherry juice brand is Cherry Bundy, which you can find at CherryBundy.com, spelled C-H-E-R-I-B-U-N-D-I.com. And tell them Steve and Carol sent you. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Steve Beeman Show. I'm Steve Beeman, your host, with my co-host, Carol Parisi. And we are here traveling down in the Master Your Mind segment, what we call the spiritual path. As you may recall from other programs, we're talking five paths on the Steve Beeman Show. The intellectual path, the physical path, the spiritual path, the emotional path, and, of course, the financial path. But they are all intrinsically integrated together for a holistic life. Absolutely. And without all of them firing on the same cylinder, you're not firing on the full you know, course you could have in life. Well, you know, like you've said, I mean, sometimes, the, you know, sometimes those legs fall out from under you. And, and any one of them, it can Absolutely. happen. And it happens. But if you have good wisdom and discernment in all of those paths, and when, if you could get them all firing at the same time, time individually they're powerful but like you've said synergy when you get the synergy which is another s word it's a great s word too it becomes a super power there you go and the fact is if you haven't seen our video you got to go to stevebeeman.com and see our video we redid the microphone placements and so you can actually see carol this week <laughs> We're happy to have that. But anyways, we traveled down the spiritual path, and we've already gone kind of deep talking about China in that first segment. We were thinking today, what could we talk about that's really deep, and but okay, not so limiting that we can't have a good discussion with you, our audience. So we talked about... We talked about the spiritual path and... And science and the spiritual path. Can yes. science dovetail with the spiritual path, or do they conflict? Well, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you something. I think science is can be looked at... You could look at science in a spiritual way. And now, let's look at nature, because that's the easiest thing. Any one of us, okay. not everybody has a microscope, but anybody could go look out their window. And okay, folks, you right now, you got to do what Carol's telling you. Even though it's nighttime, you got to go look out the window. Well, now think about it, okay? Here, spiritual path. There's something called wind. Can you see the wind? No. But what can you see from the wind? The result. The effect. Absolutely. So people could say, why am I here? Is there a creator? Well, I'm sorry to say, but I could take a room that's a total disaster and it's not going to be fixed unless somebody goes ahead and does the work. That's why I don't believe in a big bang theory because 
all of a sudden you can't just have something from nothing. And if you start looking scientifically at DNA, it is so intrinsically made and the way things all work so your, together. So your argument would be that with an ordered universe, yes. we can't have chaos starting it. You can't, you can't have chaos. How, how? How? Have you ever had chaos in your life? Okay, l let me go back to the science of this, though. And okay. let's go to particle physics and string theory, oh, which is the latest Are we going to go down black holes? You know, 96% of the, the worth of Earth we're, is dark matter. Dark energy and all that. <laughs> oh, yes. Here, here's where I kind of wanted to go on this, and so I'm going to bring us back to a little bit where you're talking purpose and meaning and order. Here's the reality. I think what we're finding as we grow as a nation and as a world in our knowledge, we're finding that there are more conflicts in the science than we think there are. About every hundred years, we look back and go, how did you believe that? A lot of the science we've thrown out and replaced validates faith. Okay, go, go, look, go, go deeper. Peel that onion well, back. We're going go to, because it's really cause... important. I think if you look at something like the flood. Okay, and the, Noah's flood. Noah's flood. In the Hebrew and the Christian doctrine, we have a major flood. I think it's also in the, theory, the story of Gilgamesh, Well, here's too. my point. Around the world, whether you're in Japan or South America, there is overwhelming evidence that indeed there was a flood. Yes. At about that time. Yes. So the science is actually supporting the faith systems more than we think it does. I love that. Truly, as we go through DNA and we study the development of DNA, we're learning that the order to it, the probability of chaotic drivers to it is almost zero and ad infinitum. In addition, we're learning that things we always thought were true aren't true. And let me give you that. We're going to go down the rabbit hole here. I love it. Okay. We'll How go, far down the rabbit hole are we going to go far. here? <laughs> okay. In the latest in particle physics, and this gets again into this string theory. Is now thing. this quantum? We particle physics are quantum physics, quantum right? Mechanics, With the little quantum, tiny quantum. We're going really small. We're going to okay. really, really small. Okay. The theory is this: that all matter and all everything is made up of little strings of energy. They mm -hmm. look like little rubber bands, and they resonate at the micro, 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 tiny level. Okay, in order to have string theory, now everybody put your tin hat on, because here we go. In order to have string theory hold true, there must be a minimum of 11 dimensions to the universe. Okay, now <laughs> track with me here, because this, oh, okay. this is getting really we're, we deep. We wanted to go deep on the spiritual path, here we go. And we're trying to have a little fun with it, this is all true. Okay, so what the theory is now is... The but now you said it's all true, now you say it's a theory. Well, it's because we can't prove it at that level. We can't see it, it's too small. It's just mathematical equations. But those equations demand 11 dimensions. And what they're suggesting now is the Big Bang didn't ever happen. Oh, now, really? Now, I've heard from a one point of light that, that there was a creation. Well, that, that's what we've held for a long time. Okay, but this okay. new generation of theoretical physics is saying, well, maybe that's not it. Maybe it was two of these dimensions crossing over each other, creating a third dimension. That's the universe we see. So it's the point being, we're learning things in science that debunk things we thought we knew. You know, there's so much that we don't know. I, what I do know, that there is more to life than this. Okay, well, this is the important thing on the spiritual path. And Carol, I want to... Keep wanna, going, keep going. I'm going, going to, and I've got to bring you down to this. It's all about faith. Because the science that we claim to be known science, when you peel away the onion, is all faith. We have faith that the Big Bang happened. We don't know. We have faith that string theory might explain everything. We don't know that. It's faith. And the faith systems of religion are very similar to the faith systems of science. These things are much more closely tied than people think. So science not only doesn't conflict with the spiritual life, it supports a spiritual life both in its processes and how it's looked at. Well, I've... I've I wish I had the retention capacity of you, <laughs> but I've seen a lot of different things. There, there are things out there. What is this this hadron collider now? Doesn't isn't there something in CERN that they call yeah. the God it's, particle? What, well, what, what it's a boson part. What they're trying to do the, 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 the Higgs boson. Right. What particles. they're trying to do is create a black hole. Okay. And they're trying to do it by smashing particles together at the speed of light Same. and having them have so much energy that they create a black hole. Okay. The funny part of this, and this gets into, the, we're really off the deep rabbit hole on science here, but the funny part well, of this... Well, we said we were going to talk it, about spirituality it, and science. The concern <laughs> is if they create a black hole, will it become self-supporting and destroy all of us? 
<laughs> because a black hole consumes everything around it. Right. By, so right. doesn't it just get bigger and consume and consume? They don't know. They don't know. So they're, that's why they're scared of this Hadron Collider where they don't they ever were, want to but deploy But they were also it. afraid when they blew up the first atomic bomb that it would literally light the atmosphere on fire. So, well, it did a pretty good job around Hiroshima. I mean, well, but it's very contained. It's a lot less than we thought it could be. But there's things that are smaller than atoms. We first well, well, we thought that nothing. We go down to you know right. from protons and neutrons down to quarks, down to quarks. all that. Now we're down to strings. It always gets changed from what we believe, and so faith becomes an important part of science, which we try to prove our theories and our hypotheses, but as we learn more and we learn more and we learn more, we find that indeed we didn't know what we thought we knew. So what do you think? Do you think our creator looks at all of us and laughs when we start trying to discern all of this and try and talk about it scientifically. Right. Let's stay Don't down you? this. Okay, first, go ahead. My first thought is our creator probably doesn't laugh because God is so much bigger than what we think. I'm not sure laughter is part of that enterprise. Oh, and I'll disagree with human, you on that. Well, I'll you're disagree humanizing God. Oh. <sighs> You're assuming that this creator is like us, well, but, outside but, of the spiritual realm in which we were created as God, in, in the, in the sense of like him. Our Bible tells us, and I know you're a believer, right? God created man in his own image. Right. Are you going to say anything? I mean, let's face it, laughter is a good thing. Laughter scientifically, you want to go science, right. laughter scientifically makes endorphins. Right. Okay? Laughter does good things for our brain. It makes us not, you know, be depressed. So why wouldn't our creator, this wonderful thing called laughter, have the capacity to do this? Well, I'm such? not suggesting it doesn't have the capacity for it. I'm just not sure that's how it manifests itself. I'd hate to hear God laugh. It'd probably be the biggest earthquake we've ever seen. Oh! <laughs> but, but to your, God's going, oh! To your point, the more I study things in my life, and the more I understand what Scripture says, the more I follow what science says, the more I begin to realize that we don't know what we think we knew. And we're learning each and every day new things in science, like string theory, that demand dimensionality to the universe. And when you read Scripture in concert with that, yes. it starts to match up. Because Scripture starts to talk about things that we in our dimension of gravity and our understanding of science don't work. Angels, for example, that don't have a gravitational issue. If you look, read Scripture and they can, how do I say this, but you can kind of see them floating through walls and stuff, that concept. Yes. That's possible in some of these other dimensions under string theory. You know what? It still begs to the conscious question, what are we here for? It all comes back to faith. <laughs> anyway, we come right back. We're at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk about our wonderful S word. You want to be here for that. And we want to thank our friends at Cherry Bundy for being with us today. So we'll be right back. A funny thing happened over the past years. Responsibility for retirement got shoved onto your back. IRAs, KIOs, 401ks, and all the other alphabet soup of investment options were thrown to you with the happy statement, you're now in charge of your own retirement. The problem is money doesn't come with an instruction book. Well, here's the instruction book with no biases, no conflicts of interest, a pure purpose to promote and provide financial education. Welcome to the Society to Advance Financial Education, a 501c3 not-for-profit organization created and sustained to help you, real people in the real world. When you need a friend in finance, someone to explain things and make them understandable to you, you need SAFE. We have spoken to hundreds, thousands of people in transition, men and women dealing with retirement, college planning, divorce, death, transitions of all kinds, and we are there to help. Visit safefinancial.org on the web and become a member. Let our educational tools help you. Welcome back, my friends, to the Steve Beeman Show. I am Steve Beeman here with my lovely and talented Carol Parisi, my co-host, who also is our spokesmodel for Cherry Bundy. So if you watch the video up on stevebeeman.com, you'll see Carol playing Vanna White with the Cherry Bundy, and that's kind of fun. Cherry Bundy's good stuff. It is good stuff, and it actually does what they're advertised to do, which makes you feel better, live a little healthier, a little, a little happier. It's kind of good stuff. Let's go down to the word of the week. And Carol, as we go down, we're on the S word in the alphabet, our first time around. And what word have we chosen for our audience? <laughs> that sounds like a game show host. What word have we chosen today? <laughs> today, Steve, our word <laughs> right. of the week now is... Let's open curtain number two. <laughs> no, it's not quite like that. But... It's, we're having fun here, folks. Hey, you know what? We're on the <laughs> spiritual path, and I really wanted to be profound with the spiritual path. And you know what? I think the word success 
Because success is a very misunderstood word, Steve. That's one of these big 30,000 foot words because who knows to each individual what success means. How do you define success? I mean, let's, let's face it. Somebody who has had a lot of conflicts in their life, let's say physical conflicts, okay? Um, who was that? Wilma Rudolph, wasn't she, the, the a, athlete? A, wasn't she a swimmer? Or she, I think she, she was a runner. Was she, okay, she was a runner, but didn't she, wasn't she born with a lot of things that prohibited her from even, they said that she couldn't walk. It's actually very common among some of these athletes that they're born into a world where people say you can't do it. Right. But, you know, there's an old And thing then she that, ended up being, what, the first woman to win a gold medal or African-American woman to win a gold medal or something? You know, you start thinking down this path of success, though, and you start to go down, is can't even a word, right? Oh, no. No. And it's all tied to it because sometimes success isn't measured in in like an outcome. It's measured in a process. Oh, that is so huge. Say that say that very slowly because that is a very profoundly deep success principle because there's okay. principles to success. I have to get my profound voice on. And now. success leaves clues. Success is not an end. I don't even remember what I said. Success is not an end point. It's, it's a the process. process. It's, it's, the yeah, it's the growth. It's the journey. It is the journey. It is the journey, it is the the journey because the growth in the journey, you know, I, and here's a big success principle. You have to have some idea of where you want to go. And you also have to have some kind of map on how to get there. But you also have to have a heart of surrender to know that sometimes your path may take deviations, which will get you to your destination, which is might not even be the original destination of what you thought you were going to do. You can see how Carol's a life coach. You got my mind buzzing here. <laughs> I'm thinking success just gave me more money. Oh, but you know better. The success is not just money. There's success on the five paths. Okay. Each of those five paths has a success principle all of its own. And if you could achieve a success, a level of success on each of those five paths, right. you have reached. Well, let's talk about what's success on the emotional path. Success in the emotional path is to be able to be compassionate, caring, and feeling without it totally ruling, ruling, ruling your life. Okay. What would you call success on the intellectual path? Being able to comprehend and understand other people and situations at some level to give you enough wisdom and discernment to make good choices on those situations. The point being that success isn't one thing. No, it's it not. It can be many different <laughs> things. And as we travel in our lives and find success, we can find it in the little things of life. Um, a couple of days ago, I had a chance to sit by a, by a riverbed. And it was on a bank of a river. Nice. And I was looking at the trees across. And at that moment, success was to be in the moment. Wait, wait, okay, you just said something now. Wait, you just said something. Where were you? You were in nature. And you were being in the moment of that natural. Because guess what? Everything our creator made, How made you, you too. How did you get me there? Because you said you were there. You said you were at a riverbed and you were looking at trees. I'm in the and, moment and of you my were own in the mind moment. staring at these trees. And you're going back to this nature thing. I get the impression you really like nature. You know what? I think if we all take the time to... There is a, there's a saying, take time to smell the roses. I think it means, first of all, the nature, heaven and nature sing. Okay? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let heaven and nature <laughs> sing. It's a very old school principle, is that nature has seasons, our life has seasons too, doesn't it? If you look at, and we're talking the spiritual path. This is, this is really powerful stuff. If you're listening to this, take it to heart because this notion of seasons of living and the linkages to nature are very real. Now, I, I get it. Paganism was very much into nature with the green man and everything right. else. Well, I'm not, I don't believe that. Tree, I'm, not a pe you know. I'm not a tree hugger peg, right. but you know something? There is joy from that. You know? <laughs> I mean, you said there's joy from me hugging a tree. No, there's joy from nature. I went, okay. I'm I went, not going to hug a tree. I went down to my, my patio today, and I went to go pick some tomatoes off the tomato plants and all of a sudden this toad jumped in front of me and he was the cutest little thing Folks, and it brought so much if, joy yeah. to my heart just to, well, how about the turtle in the pond i'm gonna start laughing if you've never seen carol you gotta go see the video on stevebeeman.com she's like a little wind-up doll when she gets like this it's just fabulous oh stop it but, i just nature is a beautiful thing I and, and god created all of that for us and for his glory, and if we can be in touch with it, I think it honors and our And maybe creator. we come right back to the notion of success being a feeling of contentment with where we are. Now, you said feeling. Is that the emotional path, too? Oh, my gosh. I actually had a feeling. <laughs>
I th success is it, it's 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 being whole it's and it's being it's relation with other people. It's relation. Success is 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 spiritual as uh, you know as above and with each other horizontal. Yes. So here's the thing: when we come to where the rubber meets the road in success, we're going to talk mastering your money next, and we're going to come in <laughs> and talk about black swans and how they affect the success of many many investors around the world. So if you've ever wondered what a black swan was. Well, stick around for the master of your money. Is it like a black hole? It's worse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We just finished tax time, and I know, like me, many of you are thinking, wow, this gets more complicated every year. I'm Steve Beeman, and my friends at Greeby & Associates have been helping individuals and successful businesses for over 20 years. In construction, they say measure twice and cut once. In accounting, trust me, research and plan before you act. When you need powerful tax and accounting advice for you or for your business, contact Greeby & Associates at 630-653-3510. Visit Greeby & Associates. Now, back to the Steve Beeman Show for insight on your money and the nation's financial future. Welcome back to this, the more serious side of the show, where we talk about mastering money. By the way, we talk about the nation's future. Go back to that first segment where we talked about the differences between the Chinese economy and the U.S. economy. Folks, we've got real issues coming up, and I don't want to get political ever, but this is a year of a vote that I truly hope you'll throw all of the garbage out and vote for policy. It's a policy year. And what we need, this is from me to you, I don't care which politician says it, what we need are tax cuts and regulatory reform. And we need it now. So, well, Why do we need tax cuts if China has so much more money than we do? Our government needs more money. Under so John maybe. Kennedy, Ronald Reagan, and other presidents we've seen where tax cuts come in and they do stimulate the economy. And thank you very much. We just got a note from a little bird that flies and it says, why don't you thank your sponsors? <laughs> So I'm going to thank two of our big sponsors. First, the Society to Advance Financial Education, a not-for-profit that's your friend in finance, and John Greeby, our accounting friend in the Wheaton area. Please give John a call. I think it's 653-3510 in the 63 area code, 630 area code, if I can speak. And we do want to say thanks to the folks at Cherry Bundy who sponsor our show and help us make it all possible. So thanks to all of them. We're going to talk, though, about swans. Okay, you're talking about swans. Specifically I've never black seen ones. a black swan. Is They're that like the ugly duckling? Rare. They're very, very rare. Is there really such thing in nature as a black swan? There I've is, seen and white That's ones. where this came from. And okay. The, here's what okay. this is. Let me bring it down to the reality. It's not just a made up phrase. Okay, we're going to go it's down a, a black hole with black swans. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this one will make sense. What black swans are are those very rare events that happen in the marketplace that cause disruption in the market. Brexit was a black swan event. Once in a million years, doesn't happen very often, boom, the mortgage meltdown was a black swan event. So one of the things that investors need to do is be sensitive that they are always on the lookout for the next black swan event. What's happening geopolitically, economically, and financially that's going to happen on a one-off thing that's so disruptive that it's going to cause your investments to go down? Okay, a lot of people say the dollar is going to crash. Uh, great. That would be a great black swan event to research. <laughs> okay, okay. But I think uh, if you would, research it, you'll find that that's probably not going to happen. Okay, a lot of people say the dollar is going to crash and our money is going to be worth nothing and China is going to take us over. That would be a huge black swan event, which would be a black cloud for but a lot those of are, people. Let's go back to science and the financial path. Those are hypotheses. Let's okay. see if you can support them with facts. The black swan event that I saw just today, and I think this is really interesting because I think it's for real. Apparently in Italy, they have a referendum coming in late October, early November. And this is a referendum on the government. And if they vote for the government, everything's status quo, steady state. But if they vote no in the Italian elections coming up in October, November, and you heard it here on the Steve Beeman show, so not many people are looking at that, this, so you need to. If they vote no, it's just like Brexit, but bigger. It could spell the end of the European Union. So wait a minute. Is Italy looking to leave the euro too? The net effect of this vote, if they, vote, if they vote no on this referendum, that's what it would do. Very few people are looking at that right now. I found it in some obscure That would be the end thing. of the euro, because Germany couldn't handle the whole thing, because who else? Germany already handles the whole thing, but uh, okay. it becomes the ruse of the European Union goes away. It's right now Germany is the European Union. It, it, but if Italy pulls out, then but Italy's the, part of the pigs, which they 
they they're See, broke Kara anyway. Kara listens to the show. She knows about Portugal, Italy, Spain, and um, Greece. Greece. Thank you. I forgot all those the G. nice, all those nice uh, Latin kind of ish countries. I forgot the G word. But anyway, right, these Mediterranean- blacks want things, folks. I'm telling you. First of all, don't read headlines necessarily because that's the headline effect. And they're, they're designed to get you excited, like the dollar's going to collapse. Look for the undertone, the things that aren't in the headlines that are out of the news articles. This came out of a news article in some Italian newspaper where it was talking about the effect of this little referendum. You read Italian? No, but I read the English translations. Of okay. Italian. I... Hey, Steve, question. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So, Italy pulls out of the euro. How, how is an American citizen just kind of going along 100 bucks a month to invest? How, how do I win from that? How is it going to affect me? Okay, what that would do is throw real enhanced volatility in the market. So things we've talked about in the past, like the VIX and these things that measure volatility. Okay. Um, if you're long stocks, you want to have risk controls in, you might consider putting stop losses on your investments or some kind of limits on the downside of your investments so that you don't get hurt. Because what will happen is if this thing does, I think the U.S. market could drop 5 to 10%. Oh, gosh. In, in October, October again. Life, that's not terrible, but it happens. Now, on the volatility things, if it drops 10%, they're going to skyrocket 100%. So there's a way to make money there. I'm not recommending it. I'm not an advisor, but I'm You're educating just you. I'm just, He's just I'm saying. I'm taking information and turning it into knowledge. Because uh, I asked a question, so I expect an so answer. I Every day I search for black swan events. That's actually what I spend most of my time doing. What is that thing that's going to happen that nobody else saw? The whole thing in 2008, that meltdown, was started by a little insurance company in Europe. It went broke and it's... Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Because I'm going to I'm gonna say something. Yeah. In 2008, back back in 2005, I started reading about all these mortgages that people were getting and people yeah. were putting zero down and people were getting yeah. loan to value and, and speculating on value. And I, wait a minute. I was right. saying to people, I said, you know what? Anybody wants to make money, you, let's get into this foreclosure right. thing because it's going to happen. You're you missing can't. my point though. The whole catalyst to that meltdown, most of us saw it coming. It's right. a question of when is it going to happen. Well, the and I, okay. The was a little obscure insurance company that went down because they were heavily into these mortgage backs. Mortgage back securities, and that right? catapulted through the entire system. Oh, which, what was the name of that? I forget. It's a long time ago. You know, that's okay, because you're right. I didn't realize. That was the black swan. Uh, okay, so that was it. Because I remember, I mean, we were doing some stuff with foreclosures into that time. But the thing is, when I didn't realize what was going to go as bad and as deep. So Everybody got can it, spot got these it. big trends. That's easy. The question is when. And, and that's what? why you're looking for black swan events. And by the way, SAFE is launching a new newsletter called the Black Swan Report coming up in September. You want to check out safefinancial.org and maybe sign up. It's five bucks a month and you can get the Black Swan Report. Yes, I write it. So it should be interesting. Hey, when we um, come back to this, we're going to talk about a new challenge for the week and we're going to show you how you can have a great week ahead. Welcome back to The Steve Beeman Show. This is Carol Parisi and Steve. We're starting to shut down another edition here, and this went by fast. It's your fastest hour in radio. It really is fast because we talk about content here you don't get anywhere else. We talk about China and its strategic geopolitical issues with the U.S., then we jump right into science and the spiritual path. And then talk about success and what that means, and then black swans. I mean, how much more can you get out of a one-hour radio show? I don't know. We, it's real help for real people. There's a lot sure of try. real issues here, a lot of deep things, very profoundly deep. And, you know, I just I love the interrelationship between science and spirituality. Absolutely. And proving religion and... Um, I, I'm not liking this whole China thing. China. It's disconcerting, but you have to learn to put it in your favor, and that's why knowledge turned into wisdom can make you money. How about, do you think China's going to like like take over the United States? I no. mean, it almost sounds like it with no, this No, I think they're a good trading partner, and they'll be a good market, but we need sound policy in the U.S. to make us competitive, and that's what we aren't getting. Hey, last week we talked on the show on our, um, our word about redemption and forgiveness, and we asked you very specifically to think about some person or situation that you would forgive in the last week ahead. So we hope that you did, because I certainly did. I did. 
I yeah, did. We but all, th there's always there's always room to forgive too. You could keep doing it. You could forgive yourself too. And that's the hardest one to forgive. I mean, who, we all look in the mirror and we're our own harshest critics. So this week, what we want to do because it is the S word, and we of course went down the little rabbit hole of success. We very much want you to spend some time in the quiet of your own mind and think about what success means to you. You know, you go to hit that point, then you're going to ask yourself, see, for me, what success means to me, and I could go through it, and maybe we'll discuss it next week, but then, where's that idea coming from? Oh, there's the deep. See, Carol likes to go deep. We had this discussion before the show about, is it nurture <laughs> or nature? <laughs> we, we don't have time to get into that. We've got no, enough we content don't. there for three more shows. Oh, well, maybe we bring it forward to another show. So what about a black swan event? Well, but let's keep an eye on that little Italian referendum coming up, folks. If you've got a 401k exposed to the markets or you've got other monies exposed, you want to keep an eye on that because that could be a major, major hit. Hey, next week, and get this, I'm going to get the alphabet right. Next week, we'll be on the T show. The T show. As you got it right this time. We're going to Mr. T here in the T we show? We might. <laughs> or maybe I'll just dress like him and get a mohawk. I'm uh, going to tell you, it will be a terrific show. I, during too much tumultuous it's times, so we'll have a terrific show. But we are going to, again. To tune into. <laughs> we'll go down the Master Your World segment because we're going to talk geopolitical stuff there. Okay. We'll talk about Master Your Mind. We've got another week on the spiritual path. Bottom of the hour, we'll have a T word that will be terrifically tuned in to your tumultuous times in this transitional... Time of existence. I, I, couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't close it out. You did try. great. So, so, Steve, so this week is S, and yep. it's look at yourself and look where your success is and what success means to yeah, you. I think that's home, a really good home. thing. Come up with what you define it as and live a life that you can look in the mirror at the end of the day and go, I feel successful. It's not about money. It's not about things. It's about an internal feeling that says, I'm on a journey I like. You know, you could have success, though, in all five areas. And that would be the goal. It's the perfectly optimized Maslow's hierarchy of needs life. Oh, can we ever talk about Maslow's hierarchy I'd of needs? That's to. a great, that would be a great I'm show too real big on that hey we do want to say thanks to our producer james thompson james is one of these rare breed who puts up with us each and every week <laughs> james you want to say hi to everybody oh there he is hey everyone thank you for joining us <laughs> there we Yay. go he actually puts us all together we want to thank cherry bundy our wonderful sponsors and ask all of you to write in we'll get you some coupons for that at carol at steve .com, of course and visit the site to see not just the blogs that we publish but the videos we do and all the content we do uh, make sure you go out and call john greeby at 653-3510 in the 630 area code and we've got some new sponsors coming online in the next few weeks thing called job formants we're very excited about 401k active watch we're very excited about it's gonna be a great upcoming weeks and steve from our heart to your hearts this show is all about you and god bless you for the week ahead godspeed make it a great week and we'll see you in just one week enjoy <laughs>